Hi guys, welcome to another short video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill and here's another in the series of car boot sale finds. Um, as you're aware, I do uh, videos on my finds, I do videos on specialist items and I do how-to videos. How to identify things, how to value things, how to buy things. Um, so I'm going to give you uh, a little uh, run over some of the uh, items I bought this week and I hope you find them as interesting as I do. Okay, what I'm going to start with here is a piece of tourist souvenir way. Um, for those who haven't guessed already, it's an egg hollowed out from the underneath and it's an ostrich egg. Um, probably come from Africa or somewhere like that. Somebody's been on holiday. It's fully hand painted. Uh, but what I like about this one is it's a hunting scene with the tribal men and the spears hunting some sort of stag. You can see the horns here in the animal. Now I've seen these eggs with decoupage which is bits of paper, decorative paper glued on and um, varnished over and things. Um, they, they decorate them in a variety of ways but this has to be the first tribal hunting scene I've uh, actually had. It's got a little bit of age to it, not a huge amount, um, but again, really nice. Um, and it was, you know, it was a good way for the people, whatever it was, Africa or whatever, they, you know, they'd eat the egg and then they'd make a little bit of extra money by making these for tourists. They look, they look amazing on display. Um, and an interesting thing, when people come into the house and they ask, what is that? You've got a little story to tell them. So, yeah, I quite like that. Next then, I'm going to go on to a little bit of glass. Now what we have here is a piece by Davidson. It has a registration number in here, RD 130443, I think, without my glasses on. Um, now this type of glass is known as Perline or Vaseline. It comes in a variety of colours, uh, yellow and blue. Um, it always has this sort of white rim. And on the right background, it absolutely glows, looks beautiful. A piece like this a few years back would have been up £35, £40. But now it's a £15 or £20 piece. But still very collectible, it'll sell in no time at all um, and it literally come in for £2 down in Cardiff this week so it's good work in stock um, some of this Davidson Vaseline glass can pull serious money sadly this one isn't one of those but it's still good work in stock so I'm not going to complain about that at all um, I'm going to come on to then an oh, absolutely stunning piece of Capa de Monte. Here we have a piece of San Marco Capa de Monte, um, eight, nine inches tall, and you have a boy here, obviously, with a bird of prey. Uh, it is a signed piece. Turn it over. Oh, Maria Ogella. It is not a San Marco piece, my apologies. And it has a pattern number of 5418 and the end with a crown for Capa de Monte. Now, this is a seriously collectible piece. Um, sadly, it's lost a finger by here and the tips of the fingers here. Um, but these can pull some serious money if in really good condition. Um, I've had a look online and some of them can be up hundreds of pounds. In the condition this one's in with a little bit of damage to the fingers. Um, because of the size of it, it's probably a 30-40 pound piece of Capa de Monte. And again, come in for three pound. What more do you want for a bit of uh, porcelain? You know, shows what you can actually buy. And the worst part about it is, if you look at the tips of the finger here, you can see how clean the break is. So that was done literally on the day 
um, that I purchased it. So they, they, you know, if they'd shown a bit more care, this piece would have survived in perfect condition. But it is absolutely beautiful. But that'll be up for sale now this week. I doubt it'll last long. We come on then to a real nice piece of 1920s. Now what we have here is, I think it's a mahogany box. Um, every one of these bands and shields is solid silver and every piece is hallmarked. Every single piece. Now what's the box? It's a cigarette dispenser. You would lift it up. Your cigarette would fall into the centre, you slot down and it would hold the cigarette in the middle. Um, now it's fully hallmarked, Birmingham 1920. Smoking memorabilia at the moment hasn't hit off. Smoking is so anti-social or anti-cool that the smoking related items still don't pull money at the moment. But it won't be long before these start to demand de decent money. Now I paid £10 for this in Bessemer Road on Saturday. It was heaving. Um, the amount of sellers there, they were turning them away. They were right out to the front gates. Um, I'd imagine this is going to go for about £35 at the moment. But given enough time, then you're going to have a really nice quality piece. Um, you know, that'll be worth a bit of money. I'm going to move along to a piece of ironwork. What we have here is a piece of Victoriana. It's a flat back, as in it's flat, so it would go up against um, the fireplace on your mantelpiece or something like that. They never decorated the backs. Um, it was very similar to the Staffordshire flat back figures you get. I've done a video on them, um, where basically they're designed to go up against a wall or on your mantelpiece, or up against the fireplace, and you only see the front. Hence, they don't decorate the back, and they're flat. Now, the best maker for cast iron is Colebrookdale, or one of the best anyway. This piece is sadly unmarked. It has good age. Um, doesn't have the casting quality of Colebrookdale or something, one of the others, but it literally came in for £2 in a box of junk. Now it's going to go out for 15 or £20 on eBay with my eyes closed, so again, good working stock. Don't leave these um, pieces of metal where they're. People say that cast iron and brass and copper is out of fashion. I can tell you now, I do good money on it all. We'll move on. What we have here is a piece of white fryers. Now the vase is called a molar vase obviously because of the shape, it's shaped like a molar. Um, I'm gonna do a video for you on white fryers glass, how to identify it, uh, some of the better patterns. Um, started off as Powell, Powell glass um, in the late 19th century. Um, some of the uh, 1960s Jeffrey Baxter pieces with the bark effect um, pull some serious good money. Now I've, some years ago I went to Kempton uh, Racecourse when I was starting out and they had the giant pieces of white fryers, they had £50 of ours and I left them there like some fool um, and they're up £1,000 of ours now. Um, this piece is a £20-£25 uh, piece of glass um, it's in perfect condition, lovely electric blue colour. As I say, the, mole, the pattern's a mole of ours. Lovely control to the bubbles and everything. Whitefriars always has the polished out pontal. And it's always good, thick, heavy quality glass. But as I say, I'll do um, a little chat on Whitefriars glass again. And I have a wonderful book um, that will uh, do a book review, show you the book. Um, which will help if anybody wants to learn Whitefriars. Okay guys, um, as usual, I had the uh, regular pickups of jewellery, um, no gold this week, um, some really unusual pieces of silver, you know, bracelets, and loads of bracelets, little mummy bracelet there, 
this one here was quite unusual. I haven't seen that design before. Um, you got rope, rope chains. Come across here. Then there's a pendant set with three different color ambers. Um, as you know, I always buy the jewelry. I've done um, videos on how to buy silver and gold, how to invest in silver, and so on. They're all on my uh, YouTube channel. Here we have um, a little die or dice in sterling silver on a chain. Now, if you love casinos or gambling, what a really unusual little necklace. There we go. It's quite a nice little job lot of silver. There's no scrap there, it's all saleable pieces. And it all came in at the right money, low money. Again, a bit more silver we come across. We have a pair of really nice sterling silver cufflinks. Fully stamped. Little movable uh, joints on there. Uh, let me see, where's the stamps? There you go, there's the uh, stamp there. And maker's mark should be this side. There you go, up the top there. I paid a fiver for the uh, sterling silver cufflinks, but we're going to get a set of solid silver cufflinks for a fiver. Really nice little things. We come across then to uh, a really nice little br bracket in brass, mounted on a bit of uh, wood. Now the bracket is, in my opinion, is Dutch. You can see the feet, they clogs, and you have the man and the woman pulling the rope. Now I would have felt this would have been used for maybe a dinner gong or something in its time, but it has multiple uses now. Probably dates to the 1920s or 30s, but you could mount that on a wall, and uh, off the bottom hook you can have a hang implant, you can have anything. So, multiple uses, very decorative. You wouldn't believe I actually paid 50 pence for this out of somebody's scrap box on the floor. And it's got a lovely patina and finish to the piece, nice details. So I was over the moon with that. Here we have a little brass box. Let's see if I can get it focus, there you go. Has um, a scene, almost Victorian scene, a um, bit like a tavern scene. Uh, on the front, it is a stamped example there, as you can see. Um, probably French, it's made of solid brass. And what is it? It's compact. You can see the mirror and the little powder pack. Really interesting collectible little thing. Now, there's a variety of people who make good compacts. Uh, the most common, but very collectible, is Stratton. Now I had a compact some years ago uh, that was shaped as a flying saucer and I had two and a half hundred pound for that. So compacts are certainly something that you want to be looking out for. Here we have a little piece of Italian micro mosaic. This is a brooch that is formed entirely of little beads or stones or bits of glass and they put them in to form whatever pattern they desire. A bit like um, Tunbridge Way where they inlay little tiny pieces of wood to make a pattern only this they use stones. Now this doesn't look a huge amount at the moment but it's stinking dirty. Once this has been cleaned up and all the colours come through on the stones and everything it's going to be absolutely beautiful. It's an Italian piece, it's stamped on the back, Italy. Um, it's a base metal, it's not gold, but these brooches can be quite collectible. Um, they can start off um, you know, as little as a tenner and go up £50, £100 for a, well, what is effectively a costume jewellery brooch. So that's quite a collectible little piece. Here now we have a piece of French Art Nouveau. You have the uh, cherub or small angel. Uh, kissing the uh, lady. 
beautiful Art Nouveau uh, design. It's in um, a base metal, it's not in silver. It is fully stamped up, it has a set factory mark down the bottom there and a stamp at the top. I haven't done my research on it yet. But a really nice little period pin dish. French again, I would imagine. But beautiful, full of style and a nice patina. That came in for a couple of pound, and it's going to go out for 15 or 20 pound without a problem within days. So really good working stock. Now as you're aware, I've made many films on military items and uh, military and weapons. And I absolutely love World War One and World War Two items purely because of the history, and we are, we've only got the lifestyle now because of the wars. Here you have an ashtray from uh, World War Two. It's French again. Depicts a tank in the centre. What an unusual ashtray. Now I don't buy smoking memorabilia as such, um, as I've already discussed with you um, with the cigarette dispensing box. This was bought purely because of the tank. Now I got no problems. I can uh, either put it in uh, my man cave as just a dish to put my keys in or it'll resell out purely because of the tank. It wouldn't sell just as an ashtray. But what a really nice unusual little find. I paid £3 for it but I absolutely love the fact it's got the tank in the middle. My last little piece is my favourite. It mightn't be much um, I love him, my best friend loves it, but that's because we uh, we both love penguins. Now the day I brought this on, my mother and father laughed at me because of the condition of him. It's made of thick tin uh, with enamel and it's been built up in the layers with some type of filler if you like and then painted over. It's probably 1930s advertising something. Um, but it has a really nice look. If anybody knows what he was advertising or what he was made for, then I'd certainly be more than uh, grateful for their advice. I just love the look he has. Really nice um, look to it. And that's going to end up on my shelf in my passage. Now, as you know, I've got cabinets, display cabinets. I've done a video showing some of the things I have on display. This is going to grace them shelves. It looks rustic, it looks rusty, it looks old. It's got the look that I want. I absolutely love the piece. I have just one piece left to show you from this week's buys. Um, and what we have here is a bit of vintage um, accessories, as in clothing accessories. And I have an umbrella. Now, fashion and clothing is a massive, massive um, subject. Um, people spend a fortune on a vintage dress from the 30s or 50s for a period dress. Well, what we have here is an umbrella and the designer is Karl Lagerfeld, one of the top designers. Let's see if I can uh, just pop it open for you to have a little look at this. It's absolutely beautiful. Still got his original label, a lovely distinct handle. Open this up for you to see. Yeah, and now, as you can see, it's in really nice condition. I don't think it's been used much at all. It's got the uh, wooden cane in the center. This handle is two flower petals, or flower leaves. Um, formed in a plastic so they're lilies the umbrella is called a Cala Lily um, obviously Paris does it say anything else on here? no it just says the Cala Lily umbrella but from my research it's designed by Karl Lagerfeld um, it came in for £10 selling I have no idea yet but I do know a real nice vintage period uh, umbrella it's got to be 30 40 pounds 
but it's another area other than just glass or ceramics or metalware or jewellery just trying to show you I go to a car boot sale and it doesn't matter what I buy I haven't got a limit um, I'll buy anything if I can't find an antique as I've already show, talked to you about in another video I'll buy scrap metal if I can't find that then I'll go into vintage, vintage clothing if I can't find that I'll go into vintage toys there's nothing I won't buy. I'll buy coins. I'll buy quality. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, back a year ago, there was a man down in Sully Car Boot Sale in um, Panath um, selling a straight jacket. Um, and I bought that. So, yeah, it's uh, you have to be really, really versatile and open to buy anything. Sometimes you buy it as a gamble, sometimes you lose, sometimes you don't. I done a video um, earlier this week on carnival glass. Now I bought a couple of pieces and one of them turned out to be fake when I came home done my research. But what did I lose? I paid a fiver for the bowl. It didn't matter. I learned a valuable lesson buying that bowl. Um, a fiver was neither here nor there. I'll sell it on as a reproduction. I'll get 10 or 15 pound for it because the original Northwood piece of carnival glass would have been up 50 60 pound so somebody who doesn't want to spend that type of money will still happily pay a tenner for a reproduction just to have it on the on display so they have that pattern um, I also learned a valuable lesson um, when I came home and done the research I now know what to look for on that particular piece of carnival glass to know if it's fake or real um, so don't be afraid to take a chance what are you gambling at fiver anyway? It's neither here nor there. You'll cover that on the next purchase or the next purchase. Um, just go out, have fun, see what you can find. Don't be tunnel vision looking for one thing or you'll overlook everything else. Just go, take your time, stroll around, look at the stalls, talk to the people, see what they think they got that's good. You'd be surprised the amount of times I'm on a stall and I'm just generally chatting to people and I say, have you got anything really nice on? And next thing you know, they'll go in the back of the car and they'll pull something out, a tray of medals or something. You really don't know. So, anyway, I'm babbling a bit. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, video. If you have, please give a like and a share. Uh, and uh, please don't forget to subscribe. You'll find us on Facebook, Antiques Arena. You'll find us on eBay, Antiques Arena Clearance, where I sell all this st stuff. And I have my own website, antiquesarena.co.uk. Thanks for watching, guys, and until the next time, I'll say bye.